In this photo editing tutorial, I show you the essentials of creating high quality night photos. Recently, I was in the Alps in the Filsapse region. When I came back from my first sunset shoot up in the mountains, I noticed the Milky Way perfectly positioned above the Filsapse at around 9.30. So for the following day, I planned a night photo shoot there. As usual, first taking photos during blue hour for the landscape and then taking a set of photos for the sky once the Milky Way was visible two hours later. Let's now head into Lightroom and I show you what I captured. So what we have here is one of the many photos I took with the Milky Way over the Fields Alpsee. And as you can see, white balance is off, but that's no problem. It's a raw photo and I'll correct this in a second. I shot this at ISO 6400, 50 millimeters, 2.8, 8 seconds. And why I have those settings and exactly those settings, I have a long article on my homepage, which I link below. For the 50 millimeters I'm shooting with, those are the perfect settings, in my opinion, to capture the Milky Way and to get, in the end, clean images, as I show you in a second. But first of all, let's look at this single frame out of camera and how relatively noisy it is. It's, as you can see, pretty dark, so I'll have to brighten it up, add contrast, and this will further increase the noise, but you see there's quite a bit of noise, which is why typically I don't just take one photo, I take many photos. In the past, when I was shooting at ISO 6400, I was taking between 20 and 40 photos, which I then used to average out the noise. And I show this in this video very quickly. Now with the new noise reduction Lightroom, I can get away with a lot less photos. Let me just show you how great the noise reduction already is on such an image. First of all, I want to show you the typical settings I'd apply to the image to make the sky look more interesting. So here's the corrected image and it's mostly basic settings. So brightening up, adding contrast, clarity, some dehaze, and very importantly, making the temperature much cooler because a night image, in my opinion, should have more of a bluish tint to it. And now with those settings, if I zoom in, you see now the noise is much more severe. So this is unusable now. So before it was okay, but since I had to brighten the image and do all those adjustments, totally messes up the image quality. So as it is now, this image is not usable. But let me show you when I apply the noise reduction from Lightroom with a setting of 50 to this image. Now I put two photos here side by side, one without noise reduction, one with noise reduction. And let's just zoom in and just see how crazy this is. So <laughs> on the left, obviously noise reduced with setting 50 in Lightroom. So I not even went up to 100. Um, I feel like something between 25 and 50 is usually good enough. And for ISO, ISO 6400, I'm using 50 and you see it's crazy. So you still have all the stars, all the color noise is gone. Here, the structures in the Milky Way, they look quite impressive. And so the normal noise, it's controlled very well. And this would already be a usable image in my opinion, if you want to print it very large. So because of that, so first of all, this noise reduction applied to a single image, already impressive. Now let's just apply this to like five or let's do 10 images I took as a sequence and then average those out. And then you see what you can achieve. So I exported the images, which I applied the noise reduction in Lightroom as TIFF files, 16 bit Adobe RGB. Usually I use Profoto, Colorspace, but uh, Sequeda, the software I use for the image averaging. So this is Sequeda, which I already have open here. You can download it for free and I'll leave a link to it in the description. It only supports Adobe RGB. So this is the max I can use. And I've loaded five images now here into Sequeda. And then you make a few settings here. For example, you leave this here, you want to align the stars. This is important because we want to average out the noise in the sky. Then you set the sky region. I have it set to gradient. So basically the effect of the averaging will be faded out down here a bit. If you have a very flat horizon, you can also use the boundary line or you can create an irregular mask, which would also work here. But yeah, for this image, I try the boundary line. Then very important, high dynamic range, set it to on. Remove dynamic noises on reduce distortion effects complex and down here color space Adobe RGB and then you just press start and the magic is done. 
I also do this now with first this five images and then 10 images and we're gonna head over to Photoshop and I show you what the software did. Okay, so here in Photoshop, I have both images open. I call it fields up 10. So it's 10 images stacked and here five images stacked. And let me first show you down here the horizon line. You see here for the 10 images, it's blurred out a bit for the five images also, but much less so. The reason for the blurring is the stars move across the sky. And if you want to average noise in the sky, so basically align the stars, then the foreground or the landscape will shift a bit or rotate a bit in each image. That's why the landscape in such an averaged image is usually no longer sharp. But the good thing is now let's look here at the sky, how noise free it is already here in the five images that are stacked there's nearly no noise left. But if you go here to the 10 images, you see it's completely clean. So you just have the stars, which are still very sharp. And other than that, no noise at all. So this is now 100% fuse, so it's really pixel peeping. And it's a very clean image for, for the sky. So what does it mean? You can take or get away with ISO 6400, taking just, let's say five photos, where just through average and get a minimal shift in the landscape, so it will also be easy to blend then with a foreground image, which you would typically take either using a long exposure at low ISO, or if you're shooting already around blue hour, you can take those photos and do a time blending. And on my homepage, I have a complete start to finish tutorial where I show everything also, including the stacking here for the sky. So the noise averaging again, so complete start to finish tutorial and you can purchase it on my homepage. So it's nearly two hours where I show everything and not just the averaging for the sky, most importantly, how to get everything together, which is, in my opinion, the tricky part, getting a convincing blend. So yeah, this is available for $20 on my homepage or 20 euros to be more precise. And you can get it if you're interested. Other than that, now with this image, you see how easy it was to get a clean image. So years ago, you needed something like a star tracker, so a device you put on your tripod, which moves the camera to yeah, get clean images of the sky. Now with software like Sequator, which is out there for a few years already, and then combined with noise reduction in Lightroom, you get insanely clean star photos very simply. So just thinking eight seconds times five. So you get the whole thing. So you also need like a few seconds in between the shots, but less than a minute and you get a clean image for the sky. So that's incredible. And yeah, that's what I want to show you in this little tutorial, just kind of an inspiration. I also now show you the final image, the final blend. I don't go through the complete workflow because as I said, you can see this in my tutorial if you want. Hope you liked this, found this interesting and see you in the next video. Bye.